Need some extra storage? Or maybe just some place to store some fine china behind some glass? Whatever your need, I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful showpieces to have in your own home. Once I had all of the alder milled up to spec as far as three quarter inch thick, it was time to mill up the plywood. And I cut all of the pieces all at once, including the half inch backer and the panel that goes in the door. The carcass is three quarter inch thick. Now using the dado stack on the table saw, I set it up for three quarters of an inch thick and then milled out the dados as well as the grooves for the shelf and the back. The back is a half inch thick. Meanwhile, the shelves are all three quarter inch thick. The bottom shelf is offset roughly about four inches from the floor to make room for the base trim molding that will hide any gaps that you might see. All of the plywood have been edge banded with alder so you won't see any of the rough edges from the plywood itself. Once the cabinet was all put together, then it was time to make the face frames and I did that using pocket hole screws and then adhered it to the cabinet with nothing but glue and clamps. So there are two three quarter inch thick pieces that are sandwiched on top of each other. Now this top is flush all the way around the cabinet except for the back which is inset about a half of an inch. The trim that you see, this is just base cap trim that has been mitered on two corners and is flush on the very back. This covers up any of the plywood edging that you might see from the top itself. Now the base trim is four inches wide alder that is mitered on two ends and then flush on the back of the cabinet with just a simple little cove out of one of the corners just to give it a little bit of detail. Now the door frame is a little different. I did not make it like the face frames for the cabinet because I didn't want pocket holes to be seen. So it is put together with tongue and groove joinery and the groove is actually continuous all the way around the door to make room for the half inch thick cabinet. Now I offset the center of that groove just a little bit because I wanted slightly more reveal on the front versus the back. Another thing that I did do was wrap it all the way around the center panel just slightly to be inside that groove to give me the appropriate reveal that I wanted. The big cabinet on top is a little bit more narrow as far as how deep it goes. This is also made from plywood on the sides, half inch plywood on the back that is also in a dado and groove all the way around. The shelves, like I said before, are fixed. They are edge banded. The bottom shelf is actually back set the same depth as the normal shelves because this door is an inset door just like the lower cabinet. So whenever you shut it, the face frame of the door has a slight reveal of about an eighth of an inch. That's the way I designed it and I wanted it to just barely clear the top of this cabinet by an eighth of an inch when you open it. The face frame of this cabinet is also put together with pocket screws but it's only done on the top that joins the sides. There is no face frame at the very bottom. Now once I had the face frame in place and out of the clamps, it was time to put the top on so I can start figuring out how to cut my trim. Now the top, like the lower cabinet, is sandwiched between two three quarter inch thick pieces. So there's one that completes the cabinet carcass and then the other is to give me overhang so I can attach some crown molding. So the overhang is roughly about four inches on both sides as well as the front. Now if you notice on the crown molding, it is a three step kind of crown. So you actually have the molding itself, some mitered step blocks that give the, the depth all the way up to the top. The top is a piece of plywood, like I said before, that's edge banded all the way around with a quarter inch thick strip of alder. Now, if you ever cut crown and you notice that your joints don't quite seal up very good, you could go two ways here. You could back cut your miter 
That way the very front section is actually going to touch before the back section of your miter. Or you can take a screwdriver like I've done and go over that joint until that gap closes up. You can do that all the way down the joint and then just do a light sanding to take care of any inconsistencies that the screwdriver might have left. And no one will be the wiser that that crown never did quite meet up the way it was supposed to. Now the construction of the door for the upper cabinet is slightly different than the construction of the door on the lower. This is a glass fronted door, so it is going to require, instead of a tongue and groove, it's going to have to have a rabbit. Now I did take the pieces to my table saw and do a continuous groove all the way around. It is slightly offset, so I can have a quarter to a 3 8 inch reveal here, because I wanted the glass set back a little further than the panel that's in these doors. Now the glass, I probably went a little overboard with the holders, but I did not want this glass to rattle or fall out. Now the mounting of these, I just went ahead and flush, uh, face mounted them rather to the rails and styles, but I went ahead and just screwed those right to the door, laid out the holes, so whenever I had all this stained and lacquered, uh, it was easy to install the hardware. I did that for the hinges, the glass locator holders, as well as the knobs. Now the client elected to go with a fairly dark stain, so I suggested ebony and they liked it. Using my Fuji Q4 sprayer, I went ahead and loaded it up with a non-thinned ebony stain and using a 1.0 millimeter tip, I just sprayed over all of the pieces, letting it set about five minutes before wiping it off. Once the stain had cured overnight for roughly about 24 hours, I sprayed on a satin lacquer. All in all, I think the cabinets came out wonderful there are plans in my uh, description down below or on my website that you can use to build these yourself. But I want to thank you guys for joining me on this episode. Like I said, drop some comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next build. So one, two, three, boom!